Vietnam's financial sector has emerged to be a hotbed of foreign interest. Japanese firms, South Korean and Singapore companies have all been pouring hundreds of millions to even billions of dollars to acquire a stake in Vietnamese banks. These are all creating the next wave of economic development in Vietnam and a way for it to yet again prove itself to the world that it is the next Asian miracle. So in all honesty, why? Why are there so many foreign interests in Vietnamese banks? Well, we all know first and foremost that the country has a robust economic growth that has been outpacing many of its regional counterparts. Secondly, there is also a growing middle class, which often translates to increased consumer spending and a thirst for modern banking services. However, one thing that has always stood out is arguably the government. The Communist Party of Vietnam has actually allowed several foreign companies in the past to acquire weak banks. In in fact, it was only in 2018 when the leaders of Vietnam had allowed this to happen. According to some analysts, this may drive more foreign investment activity to the country and even enable those weak banks to survive or even succeed. But anyway, let's move on and talk about which banks are actually being bought, how much are these acquisitions, and why does it hold significance? First on our list is VP Bank, which stands as a prime example. VP Bank is one of the largest commercial banks in the country. How big is the company, you ask? Well, they are massive. In 2022, the company reported over 78 trillion Vietnamese dong in revenue, and on top of that, the company holds over 631 trillion Vietnamese dong in total assets. That is approximately 27 billion US dollars in assets, massive for the scale of Vietnam's economy. This has then led one of Vietnam's largest investors, Japan's Sumitomo Mitsui, to acquire a significant stake in VP Bank. This stake, worth over $1.5 billion, has led Sumitomo Mitsui to now have a 15% interest in VP Bank. This deal has earmarked one factor for Vietnam's economy, the fact that Japanese companies are coming in to not only buy and profit from these shares, but to also help establish Vietnam's banking sector. But we will talk more about what the impacts are later. For now, let us talk about the other major investments. Another significant case is when South Korea's HANA Bank acquired a 15% stake in Vietnam's BIDV Bank for a whopping 850 million US dollars. Just like VP Bank, BIDV, BIDV, or also known as Bank for Investment and Development of Vietnam, is also a big bank. In fact, the company even says that it is the country's largest bank by assets. In their 2022 annual report, they stated that they have over 90 billion US dollars in total assets. So, what can this HANA Bank stake indicate? Oh, it indicates a lot. For a South Korean company to hold a 15% stake in Vietnam's largest and arguably most important bank can say just how keen investors are on Vietnam's overall financial industry. Moreover, it is also known that HANA Financial Investment, a subsidiary of HANA Financial Group, even acquired a 35% in bid V securities. It suggests a long-term outlook that says that they see more opportunities out there and that they want not just a bank, but more interest in the entire financial industry. Vietcom Bank, another big Vietnamese bank, has also seen its stakes being acquired. In 2019, it was reported that Singapore's Sovereign Wealth Fund, GIC, along with a Japanese firm known as Mitsuho, has jointly acquired stakes in Vietcom Bank. At that time, it was known that Mitsuho held a 15% stake in the bank, whereas GIC had just a little over 2.55%. Other than the banking sector, there are also stakes made in the entire financial industry, just like the one by HANA Financial Investment. Japan's Ozora Bank, a prime example, acquired its own 15% stake in Vietnam's Orient Commercial Joint Stock Bank for approximately $139 million. There is also the acquisition made by Mitsubishi UFJ, one of Japan's primed companies. Mitsubishi UFJ, through its subsidiary Krongsri, had announced in 2021 that it will acquire SHB Finance, a consumer finance company that held over 300,000 retail customers. Another remarkable investment in the financial industry. Now you've got it. While there are more out there, what stands clear is that Vietnamese banks are being acquired left and right by foreign industries. Interest. What is even more surprising is that these acquisitions were made recently. They weren't made 10 or 20 years ago, 
they were made in the past five years or even less. Why does that hold importance, though? Well, because that may suggest that more acquisitions can be made in the future. One can even say that we are only at the beginning. Now, the most vital part of today's video isn't the reason foreign investors are investing in Vietnam, neither is it the specific deals themselves, but rather what are the impacts to Vietnam's economy, its banking sector, and its people. First, the entry of these international giants brings about a noticeable shift in the quality of banking services. With global expertise at their fingertips, Vietnamese banks can accelerate their transformation, integrating advanced technological solutions and best practices. As highlighted in articles from OpenGov Asia and the Ministry of Defense's site, the focus isn't just on expanding services, but also on ensuring they're at par with global standards. Beyond the technological and operational enhancements, there's a broader economic implication. As foreign investors pour capital into Vietnamese banks, it strengthens the country's financial backbone. A robust banking sector can support larger and more ambitious infrastructural and developmental projects, fueling Vietnam's journey towards becoming a high-income nation. However, every coin has two sides. While the benefits are numerous, there are also concerns to address. Reuters touches upon Vietnam's policies and how they might need recalibration to ensure that foreign ownership doesn't lead to excessive influence over the nation's financial trajectory, striking a balance between global integration and retaining domestic control becomes crucial here. These influences may have potential consequences down the line. Their influence does not even limit to one's own industry. The banking sector is a huge part of one's economy, and there are times in history when these foreign interferences tend to influence a country's public policies, political decisions, and even social norms. One example that I can give is South Korea. South Korea, through its increasing influence in Vietnam's economy, may be used in the future as leverage. They may use their position to promote its cultural exports even further or to give preferential treatment in bilateral agreements. Then there's also the topic of competition. As local banks get bolstered with foreign investments and expertise, it inevitably elevates the playing field. Local banks, without such international backing, might find it challenging to compete, leading to potential consolidations in the banking sector. Competition, as many economists rightfully like to point out, is the backbone of one's industry's success. Yet, possibly seeing these smaller players die out from competition due to huge capital may inevitably compact this. See, here's one of the newest stories published in 2023. The Vietnam government, after seeing a huge increase in foreign demand for its banks, has initiated plans to actually limit these stakes. Under the proposal, published by the State Bank of Vietnam on its website, individual investors would only be allowed to hold up to 3% of the shares of a credit institution, down from 5% currently. The limit for institutional shareholders would also be reduced to 10%, down from 15%. Why did they try to implement such a policy? Well, news articles state that they did so following several cases of fraud, including one that led to a run on a bank that a prominent real estate tycoon controlled through nominees and his own small holding. The central bank then said that proposed changes would reduce risks of market manipulation. Now, would these limit foreign investments in the sector? Well, of course it will. However, arguably, it will still not stop foreign investors from maximizing what's legal. Still, Vietnam holds one of the most promising places to invest. Hence, investors may still be keen regardless of what's going to go on. In the end, the story of Vietnam's banking sector is one of growth opportunity, and foresight. It's a narrative that emphasizes the importance of progress, but not at the expense of one's identity and control. As Vietnam marches forward, it's clear that its journey in the financial world is only just beginning, and the world will be watching keenly. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.